Hi, I'm back with some more breaking news. This time we're going to be talking about Biden's proposed American Rescue Plan. My name is Lee Reams, and I'll be talking about this with you today. So what we really want to figure out here is how Biden's rescue plan might impact your, your taxes. Now, his, his plan is huge, but I'm only going to cover the tax aspects. And remember, this is not law yet. These are proposals. It has to go through Congress and be passed. And anything that goes through Congress so it doesn't come out the other end like it came in the front end. So uh, there will be some changes. So what he is proposing is an additional $1,400 uh, stimulus payment per person. Uh, this time will include dependents regardless of age. And this combined with the $600 you got from the uh, uh, the COVID plan that was passed in December will bring it to 2000 which is what everybody wanted you to get in the first place. So it will be 2000 But this is only, remember, this is only for, uh, for lower income people. So no, not everybody is going to get these stimulus payments. Uh, he's also proposing to uh, increase the, uh, the federal supplement uh, unemployment through, through September to $400 and it'll also apply to self-employed people. Now, if you recall, under the, uh, the COVID Act that was packed, passed in December, uh, they increased it to $300, and it went through March 14th. So I'm not sure exactly what will happen when this bill passes. Will it be $300 until March 14th, or will it back up for it? I don't, I don't know. So it, it didn't give us that much detail. So we just have to wait and see. But anyway, He's proposing $400 through September and also applied to self-employed people. And he's also proposing they increase the minimum wage to $15 an hour. And they want to extend the sick tip pay uh, leave. That's for people who are, are down, with the, down with COVID or have children that are out of school that are down with, because of COVID and uh, any and other, other COVID-related issues. And they want to increase that to a maximum of $1,400 per, per week. And, uh, and then he also wants to include the child and dependent care credit, which is, in, increases the rate to 50%. And 50% is the percent times the expenses. Okay. And they want to increase the expense allowance substantially to 8000 for one child. And, 16,000 for the other, so that 50% of that would be 4,000 for one and, and 8,000 for, for two or more. This will phase out for higher income taxpayers between 125,000 and $400,000 of income. And this is for one year only, and it would be refundable. In other words, some credits only apply against your income tax. Other credits are refundable, which means uh, they can offset your income tax, but whatever's left over, they refund to you as well. So this is a refundable credit, but that's also for one year only. And tax credit, they want to change that for again for one year only. And this time include children up through the age of 17. What's significant about that is a prior law was a children under the age of 17. Increases the credit to 3,000, was two, and, and also makes it for 3,600 for children under the age of six. And it will be phased out for higher income taxpayers. And then they want to modify the earned income tax credit for, for people who are, for individuals who are working but don't have any children. And this again is for one year only. Increase the credit max from about, about where it is now at 532 to about 1500. The reason I'm saying about is it's a kind of a complicated calculation, so those aren't exact numbers. And he wants to increase the credit income limit from 16,000 to 21,000. And 16,000 would have been where it would, would have gone away, been, been done too much income uh, under prior law, raise that up to 21,000 under, under his proposal. And for the healthcare coverage, he wants to increase the premium tax credit. Uh, and the premium tax credit is the credit you get to help pay for your, if for lower income people to help pay for their insurance on the marketplace. So he wants to increase that premium tax credit so that the uh, insurance cost will be no more than 8.5% of income 
for people who qualify for the premium tax credit. And even though this doesn't have anything to do with your um, with taxes, I thought I'd put this in here. It, can be, it does have a provision there to extend the uh, evictions and foreclosures moratoriums through September 30th and also provide legal assistance to prevent eviction and foreclosures. So some interesting things, but remember, it's our proposals, so don't, uh, don't jump the gun. <laughs> Wait and see if they get passed by Congress. Okay, that's it. Take care. See you next time.